Hello everyone. Happy Monday morning. My name's David Gusset. And I'm Jody Jacobs. And welcome to Hello, Hello Long Island. Island. Hello, Jody Jacobs. I know, two weeks, two weeks without you. I don't know what to do. I missed you so much. <laughs> we welcome you back, Jody. Uh, we had a genie fill in for yes, you last week. Yes, thank you, week. genie. Uh, it, it was actually a snow. You know, I get you had a squall. She right? She thinks she's smart. She thinks she's smart. Oh, I need, I need to go away. I need to go away. How'd you know there was going to be a snowstorm on Monday Anytime morning? Anytime shoveling week? has to happen, I go away. That's <laughs> it. If, if, if it's got to, if it's work, I'm gonna leave it. Yeah, I love this. Anyone who follows me on Facebook knows I love the snow shoveling guys, and we almost needed them last week. Where were you, Jody? What were, what were you up to? I went down to I went down to Tampa and I went down to Orlando and Cocoa Beach. Kind of did a little bit of a circuit. So I saw some friends, had some business down there, and then ended up hanging out with some friends that are adopting or trying to get some uh, dogs through the ASPCA adopted, and fell in love with a three-legged Chihuahua Whippet mix. So. He was very cute. We called him we called him Trippy so for tripod. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if that was nice to the dog, but if someone's taking care of a three-legged dog, figures it would be well, uh, it, Jody. Yeah, no, th these people were great. They actually there's a foster program that they have, and they actually have it here locally because I'm looking maybe to do a short-term. A love assignment with a dog and you can do fostering with some dogs so if somebody uh, dogs coming out of surgery um, maybe just had a, had a home that they can't maybe the owner died something happened though there's a lot of dogs that have a lot of love to give but have no place to go while they're waiting for a place to go and so I'm gonna be the um, middle in I think for these dogs up here so my kids are kind of excited we we're gonna try to do that over the summer but that's all thanks to Nancy and Jim down in Cocoa Beach for letting me know about the local program that's also here Jody, they just keep me on Long Island. Uh, I show my passport. They don't let me out of the state. But you're all over the country. You go to Florida. You visit other places. Going to Vegas, uh, baby. Yeah. Going to Vegas. Uh, I'll bring you with me to Vegas. You Come will? On. All yeah. right. You'll, you can promote the hell out of anything that we do, so I'd like that. Is there igniting business going around the country? I mean, I, the people everywhere, obviously, forming business activity. Is it the same as you see in Long Island? Is it different? Do you take some of your Long Island skills and bring it uh, well, to the rest of the country? All right. The rest of the world doesn't have you, so they're at a disadvantage. But <laughs> there is networking going on just about anywhere that, that I've been, whether it is in Vegas and it's... Uh, people getting together for in for dinner and they have some interests that shared interests and now they want to you know try to meet on something on the outside i think you really just start to develop relationships anything that you're interested in um, if you end up getting involved with somebody, um, I know tonight I'm going to that event. I want to ask you about what you're doing this week, but tonight I think we know where we're going. Yeah. Um, but I ended up, I'm going on behalf of Moms Who Kick to Pink Tie tonight. And that's that? an organization that, because I had an interest in kickboxing, I developed a wonderful relationship with a woman named Joanne Hutchins, a spectacular woman doing great things for women's safety. All and, charities work uh, for cancer. For cancer awareness, yep. And so we're going to, I'm going there tonight as part of the board for moms who kick. So what else is going on this week? What are you doing tonight? You're going to, what time, you said something about I, I'm parking? Gonna, I'm going to get into last week. I'm going to get into this week. But you were talking about networking, and I was asking what it's like around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and networking could be, guys, it, it could be a bunch of people coming together. Uh, networking. Uh, chambers have been around for years, mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce. So someone could uh, think that, you know, you have a chamber, a business association, business people come together, it's networking. And it could be. Uh, but guys, whatever room you're in, whether it's in Long Island, whether it's in Florida, whether it's a chamber, what kind of energy is in the room? You know, because when we do this show, if pe people could come together. It could be that everyone's sitting there. They're in their own little cliques and nothing's happening. What kind of energy are you bringing into the room? What kind of activity are you bringing into the room? Because you can walk into a room and it could be dead and nothing's happening. You go home and what do they call it? One of those chicken dinners uh, type of thing. Get a little pot pie. Or, or, or you could go into the room and there could be energy in the room and connections could be really made. And all the fluff is gone and real stuff happens. And the reason I'm mentioning that is this week, uh, it's a very interesting weekend. Yeah, first of all, look what we had. We had WrestleMania yesterday. <laughs> WrestleMania 30. <laughs> Man, if you're looking for a great promoter to follow as far as success, follow Vince McMahon. You know, the WWE on its own has more fans, Facebook members, social media people than all the major sports combined. Do you secretly wrestle on the weekends? Is that what you do? No, I don't wrestle on the weekends, but I'm going to tell you, if you're going to try and learn from someone, you might as well learn from someone who's successful. Huh? So here's this guy has this fake sport, fake entertainment, yet for years and decades, uh, was once challenged by Ted Turner, yet somehow stuck to his roots. Somehow, just 30 years with WrestleMania, but he keeps it going, keeps running events, keeps giving them names. 
Right, keeps Keep getting buy-in. Keep giving spectaculars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, goes through ups and downs, the highs and lows of wrestling. But it keeps fighting through, and that's in business. You have your ups and downs. Could someone have told the owner of Blockbuster 20 years ago that he's going to need to make an right. adjustment? Right. The guy, was a, your business the guy was a billionaire. Who's going to tell him, look at you, man, you got the Blockbuster. Who wouldn't want to be that? And 20 years later, it doesn't even exist anymore. Right. Tonight, we got the NCAA championship game. And what I'm wondering is we're concentrating on WrestleMania and we're concentrating on the championship game and all these things that they throw for us. And they're fine. They're fun. I'm a big sports fan. But when it comes to your life and comes to bettering your life and bettering your business and feeding your family, those things are nothing compared to all the great events taking place this week. I mean, the effect on one's life has so little to do with WrestleMania or the NCAA championship game. But this week of business activity that we have coming on in Long Island... Anything new that you can do to try to reinvent yourself or learn something new? Has a much better people. chance of, yeah. of... Before we get to this week, uh, just I got a cover last week. It was an honor to honor John Hill and the LASB at Carlisle at the Palace. It was an honor to honor a man who works for the Long Island Advancement for Small Business and, and in his mind, in reality, just works for the greater good. It was an honor... I'm sorry you missed this one. Mm-hmm. It was an honor to be at Debbie Viola uh, being right. featured at Bloomingdale's. That's amazing. You know, yeah. you, know, yeah. well, you know, you talk to many in our business circles, they know Debbie, and they're so proud of her. And what they're proud of her is that this quiet woman, a woman with a quiet strength, not a loud mouth like me where you'd be like, shut up already, but this quiet woman, through her hard work and talent, got noticed. Right, and, right. and her work was featured at Bloomingdale's with big signs of Debbie Viola. She's arrived. She uh, really is. She was in all, it was, she was on two floors. There was set up into five different right. sections. I don't think people uh, understood how, how deep of an artist that she, she is. I don't think she people. understood how deep of an artist she was, but so. she was. And it was just a beautiful representation of a person who works hard and talent and doesn't give up and keep going out there. And then she achieves uh, success. And I know Everybody came out to support her. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, before I go on to this week's events, anything that you want to speak about with events or anything or what? No, I'm waiting to, for you to tell me where I need to be. You ready? Yeah, I've got a couple things i got to do, but yeah, tell Check me. The, okay, guys, <laughs> let's put WrestleMania and the NCAA championships aside. Let's get our priorities straight. Our priority straight is, man, right after this show, our friends at Child yeah. Baby putting on a real estate event. Okay. reason I mention that is, man, there can't be enough smart business activity. Hey, you're out there, you're busy, uh, you can't make it to all the events, you don't like the way networking is, business activity is going, start your own business activity. Patricia uh, Stein Stein and our friends at Liberty National do, but wait, another title company tonight's creating business activity, Uh, Pink Tie. I gotta go out and get a pink dress. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking of wearing a pink, I couldn't find the pink tie so I wore a pink shirt. Good, good, good. (laughs) We'll get like the pink suit going on tonight. But tonight, over 1,000 business professionals expected a Carlisle on the Green uh, uh, at Bethpage State Park. Uh, To me, it's not a networking event tonight. It is a charity event. 1,000 people uh, looking to raise awareness and support for charity. But that's the business community. Coming together. Coming together on one end business. There will be business there to be had if you wish, uh, yet helping the community at the same time. Tomorrow, Man, Helen Zagaro's lunch break reunion. Oh, right. Yeah, I wasn't a part of the original original one, but I understand many, many people were. But you know what? Jody might not have been a part of the original. You're part of but it I'm now. But I'm going to come hungry. But, but, but my, uh, a guy, uh, my friend David, my buddy named Steve Cochran, you know, these guys started the first Panera networking with me oh, six years ago. And while a guy like Steve, an ex-police officer, isn't even involved in networking anymore, and my buddy David Klein, I don't see him any mu- that much, Man, they're both going to be at Helen's uh, lunch break yeah. tomorrow for the reunion. And that's a beautiful thing. Because Helen's we, cooking, we're coming. We that's develop it. relationships. And, uh, you know, you don't see people for a while, but it doesn't mean the connection they, and the relationship right. doesn't exist they anymore. They stand the test of time. They yeah. stand the test of time, and they'll both be there. Tomorrow night, we're going to be at the Jones Beach Hotel. All right. I called it the Long Beach Hotel. Don't go to Long Beach. Don't it go to the Jones Long Beach, Beach Hotel. The Jones Beach Hotel. <laughs> I just want to go to the beach. <laughs> And nighting business there. Wait, what? That that's the ninth because we got more Wednesday. Wednesday we got Wednesday. John Hills L I A S B has an event. Thursday Capital One mm-hmm. has a seminar going on. Friday Healthcare Initiative taking place at the Entrepreneur Center. Before and and guys, I asked you before about energy. What kind of energy are you going to bring to these places? 
Where's the Entrepreneur Center? The Entrepreneur Center, 1800 Walt Whitman Road in Melville. Man, good to know our clients. <laughs> Run by Dano and stuff. People like Dano and Helen and the others, they probably don't even know we use this show as a platform mm -hmm. to promote the wonderful stuff that they do. Well, in there the is community. so much good stuff. And like you said, everything that's bad gets headlines and the good stuff doesn't always get said. So we say it here. And we, we have to do something about that. It, there needs to be a shift. And the shift, uh, we always say, uh, our experts and politicians always say, well, small business runs the community, is the backbone of the community. They say it. We and right. the associates happen, and the people yeah. we work with, we do it. We, we make it happen. Uh, Jody, the show is about giving our viewers quality information. Uh, today's guest, and I joke all the time, well, I half joke all the time. Man, I love children. I love seniors and everyone else in between except for Jody Jacobs. I'm pretty iffy on. But today's guest, he helps... Uh, he Everybody. helps his clients. He, he helps, actually, no, in between, no. But children and seniors, college scholarships, paying for college uh, for regular people. I know like myself, uh, I hope it's not for you, but man, worrying about paying for your children's education. I know it's a stress on me and I know I'm looking for ways to save. And then before I had the man on, we talked about Social Security and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he gave me so much uh, wisdom and advice that when I saw my mom and dad, I love you, mom and dad. When I saw them from Matsubra yesterday morning on a Sunday morning, I was mentioning some of the men, these things, uh, some of the things this man said. Uh, so it resonated it, with you. You kept it. You already passed it on as new, new knowledge. I already passed All it right, on. Good. Uh, Jody, I'm going to bring out our guest. You ready? I'm very excited. Our next guest is Roger Daisley from HRD Consulting. Mr. Daisley, nice to have you here, sir. Mr. Nice Daisley. to see you. Robert. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Two people. I'm two unbelievably beautiful people sharing, giving. This is wonderful. Well. <laughs> I got interested in the educational funding because I paid for all or part of 11 college degrees. Wow, wow. you should and, get an award for that. Yeah, and I also found out that sometimes financial aid officers are not your best asset. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, they're paid by the organization to get more money in, not necessarily to save you money as mm -hmm. an incoming student. And there are so many different things that are just misunderstood. Uh, and one of the things I like to start with parents, particularly the parents of young children, because like everything in life, you start early. Right. I know a six-month girl, a six-month-old baby girl that got a $35,000 college scholarship. Most parents don't even know you can apply for scholarships until you're 15, 16, 17, or something right, like that. She's, she's an infant, she's and an infant. she's got a scholarship. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to want to get back to that okay. one. Because <laughs> me and Jody, we have antennas up, and you can imagine if someone told you that a six-month-old baby girl got a $35,000 scholarship, yeah, yeah. the first thing you'd be would be like, really? You know, yeah. you'd want to hear more about that. But before we get into your expertise, uh, okay. when me and Jody bring out guests here, we like a little bit of background. All and right. me and you had the chance to speak, and what I found so interesting on it is your background on Long Island goes back decades. Yes. It, goes, it goes back decades. It goes back to the Lyndon B. Johnson era and how your family was instrumental in making parts for the uh, uh, aerospace industry and did it for many decades as well. Yeah, many generations. But then in one swoop, when Lyndon B. Johnson comes and make a change, change happens. Uh, the reason I like to bring that is you guys had to make adjustments when that happened. You had, when we sat down, you said you had your whole life planned at nine, but those little things that happened changed your life. Uh, I like, I appreciate the history of Long Island. Your family story tells it to us a little bit. Please give us a little bit of background on what happened with that. My family started in uh, Brooklyn with a sheet metal subcontracting business. They built wheelbarrows. They moved to uh, construction of all that metal ductwork and all the uh, factories in Brooklyn and lower Manhattan. They moved the, uh, the whole factory out to Lennonhurst. And again, as I told you, when I was nine years old, I knew my life story. I was going to go to the Naval Academy in Annapolis, fly jets, get out Why of the minimum period. Why were you going period. to the Naval Academy? Because your dad went there, right? No, no, my no. dad was in the Army Air Corps Army during World War II. No, no, it's just that because I love sailing, I'm, I'm a rear commodore for one yacht club and fleet captain for another. My pat if I could live in a boat, I would live on a boat. My wife, not so much. But uh, in bigger closet she, she, she comes with We Weekend. She's, she's wonderful, uh, but she's just not to the same level that I am. 
But so they figured, okay, fine, go to the Naval Academy. And Navy pilots, in my opinion, are the best pilots simply because they get more training than Air Force pilots mm -hmm. or Army pilots. So uh, I did that. After that, I was supposed to go to Grumman or Republic, work for five years, make contacts, learn how the big business operated, and then came, come back into the family business, of which my dad, I think, was the 11th or 13th consecutive head. Um, so your family had a, a tradition of family. 11 or 12 heads came from your family to run a company. Yes. That's, that's something, right? Yeah, yeah. That shows and consistency and quality and everything that we, uh, you know, A business that you know, you're proud of, of generation yeah. after generation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I loved it. I love working there. Uh, vacations. Uh, even weekends, you come back from somewhere for Thanksgiving, you'd get two days off, and uh, you'd go down there and work because it was a fun thing to do. I enjoyed working. And Lyndon B. Johnson became president, then yeah, what happened? Yeah, he decided to decentralize the uh, aerospace industry, and so uh, at that point, I think it was uh, Fairchild had closed, Republic had announced it was closing, Grumman was, and I was working on the F-14 project, but they also had the LEM module, and, uh, but their R&D was going into canoes, metal canoes, metal rowboats, mm -hmm. buses, mm -hmm. And I could see there was not going to be a long-lived career for aeronautical aerospace engineers, so I figured I had to do something else, something different. You're reinventing yourself. Huh? I did. And so I looked at becoming a stockbroker, I looked at becoming a real estate broker, and I saw in those fields, to me at that time, it looked like they made uh, a lot of money, they were very successful, but then there were down periods. And so it was a constant up and down. And so I started in the life insurance business. So I started the life insurance business. I was a salesperson, a sales manager, and then I ran agencies and then executive management. The industry changed, the Glass-Steagall Act was repealed, mm -hmm. and suddenly all the bankers and the investment bankers and uh, life insurance people were all in the same business. Mm -hmm. And so you just had to keep studying and keep learning. So I kept studying, I kept learning. Because so, people talk about reinventing themselves now like it's a modern thing, right. like with the internet or jobs being lost or, or whatever, age or whatever it is, they always say they gotta reinvent themselves, but Four decades ago, you had to reinvent yourself. So maybe some things never changed. Maybe what? the idea of having to reinvent and adjust has always existed. It's always there, but I think it's always scary. I mean, if you are so good at one thing and that's what you've always made, especially if you've been as successful you know, as, as some people have in, in real estate, um, that, that it's difficult to turn around and go, okay, well, where's my skill set? But I, I love the fact that you went from one, two to like one totally different um, a sect of, of skills and then into this. I mean, what, what was the crossover there for life insurance and aeronautics there, um, other than maybe a love of people, a good, good sense for running business? I, 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 I love working with people. I, I just, I've always had a flair for it. I enjoy doing it. It's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I think I mentioned earlier when we were talking before the show started that I started a band in the Yacht Club just because it was something to do. It looked like there was a void. Let's go fill it and My have some fun. My kind of guy. I know. And we had a good time with that. No, I think everybody has to realize that whatever you're doing today, it's going to be different in five years. And so how are you preparing yourself for that? Uh, you know, you can't play ostrich, stick your head in the sand. Right. You've got to constantly be training. And so that's why, I mean, people look at my business card and they joke because I've got so many professional designations. But that's because I had to keep learning. And if I had just kept my first professional designation from 1976, how much of that would have been relevant today? You funnel yourself down to, to too narrow of a field, yeah. yeah. Roger, I mean, you're out there, we were talking Yacht Club, uh, so many things. You've been in commercials, you've been in documentaries, <laughs> you, you've really been out there, you've done a, a whole assortment of things. On this show, we're gonna wanna cover three things. All right. right. On this show, we're gonna wanna cover uh, Early childhood savings. Uh, Jody, I, I have a daughter in her third year of college. Maybe it's too late for me. Maybe when she wants to be a doctor, maybe it's not too late for me. Maybe there's master's programs out there and doctor programs out there that I don't know about yet. Mm -hmm. Jody has teenage children, you, yep. you know, but you, you're it's saying when it comes to early childhood uh, savings and education and funding that obviously you go to infancy. Our audience, unfortunately, we only have limited time. Three top tips when it comes to savings for childhood for children's education. What would be your three top tips? Well, the first thing is start now. Uh, yesterday was better, tomorrow's not as good. Mm -hmm. That first dollar, no matter how small it is today, is the one that's going to have the greatest impact with interest and growth. So it's always better to start early. Don't close our eyes. Never. As a dad, I closed my eyes. As a dad, I closed my eyes. I was worried about paying for my children to go to school. You just close your eyes, you fill out the forms and hope for the best. I was wrong. You mean there's a better way to do it, huh? <laughs> well, anything that you've prepared for, you can do better than if you haven't prepared, even if things change. So you're always ahead of the curve. I think it's also important to 
teach your child, and I tell parents, and I teach them how to get a sixth grader to put together a resume, a job resume. Mm -hmm. You know, it's raking leaves, it's doing the laundry, it's feeding the dogs, it's washing the car, whatever. And then just tell them, now what's gonna make this better next year? Right. You're getting them moving towards preparing their application for college. Right. By Identifying the their skills. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And the, the, the next thing that is most important is teaching your child how to research for college scholarships when they're in seventh grade. And as a parent, supervise them. Make sure they spend a half an hour a month. It's not too much. But in that period of time, they could, in the next six years, apply for over 100 scholarships it improves their odds. Starting at any age, you're saying? Any, well, no, parents, parents have to start when they're infant because uh, it takes a while before they can sign their name. Mm. Uh, that aside, I teach the parents, just put a little template to leather together. Uh, what are you gonna buy when you just have a baby? Cribs, bassinets, diapers, uh, bottles, whatever you're buying for your child, clothes, they grow so fast. Send a letter off to the manufacturer. We just bought a onesie from your company. My baby really, really loves it. Do you have a scholarship program? Can you please send me the necessary information and where can I can apply? Can it last Done. that long? Okay, so the regular person scholarship, my kid's one years old. What, right, are you going to hold it yeah. for 16, 17 years? I, I mean, how does it work? Yeah, interest is a good thing, isn't it? I, I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's better because, granted, most of the college scholarships I see at that age are between the $1,500 and $2,500 range. But still, so it's, yeah. it's still, but they, they add it? up. They hold it for years? It depends. Years? Each, each company does it different. Some just send you a check. Some people say, okay, we've set up an account. Some people say we hold it with the company and you hope the company survives. Right. But it doesn't matter. As long as you're doing it and it's, it's idiot proof. Now, the, see, one of the side things is parents say, but yeah, you can spend a lot of money on postage stamps. Well, yeah, I know. But every single one of those companies for the people that have, and by the way, I give these ideas to everybody. They're free. I don't charge anybody mm -hmm. for this thing. But it's like everything else. Maybe 20% of the parents actually do something right. about it. If you don't it. ask, you don't know. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what happens is if they don't have a scholarship program, they send you all kinds of deep discount coupons mm -hmm. for whatever it is that you're already buying anyway. Right. So, either way, so it either more way, than uh, pays for your postage stamp. Either right. way, you're a winner when it comes Absolutely. to Absolutely. Win, that. win, win. And, and time goes by fast, guys. You, you have a baby, it's an infant. Before you know it, they're in their senior year of school <laughs> and, and, and before you know it. So that was tip number one. What's another tip as far as uh, college saving? Jody, teenage son, well, she wants to send him to college. She didn't do it when he's an infant. What could she do right now? Federal government and I separate the federal government from the colleges, the federal government has decided that it's cheaper to subsidize education than it is to subsidize retirement. So as a result, anything that's a retirement plan doesn't count against you when you're filling out the FAFSA form, mm -hmm. the form that you've got to fill out right. if you're applying, right? So anything that you have that's not in a retirement plan, you wanna transfer those assets into a retirement plan. Therefore, you qualify for more financial aid. So that's that's very important because you know, you need the money. So we're talking about a right, couple they things. They go through everything. I, you they know, go through everything. My it's a hundred question have, application. Yeah, form. My friends have gone through this and and it's painstaking and it's almost you're almost at a disadvantage if you have anything set aside if it's small. <laughs> like if you, if you only did it if you punted, yeah. you're you're really kind of screwed because there's just not enough. You know they're going to look at whatever you did try to do and then and not be able to either match it or there's some things that you're not eligible. For. You know, it's interesting. Uh, most of the parents that save money for their kids' education save them in passbook savings accounts, mm -hmm. which is less than a half a percent interest. Uh, the, the next most popular, that's the next yeah. most popular. Interestingly enough, both of those will reduce the amount of financial aid you qualify that's for. That's what they told me. So, um, so you're saying that, that 529 should roll over into, I should put it into a retirement account? Like a Something that looks, smells, tastes like a retirement plan. Okay. Okay. As I was saying, the show goes by fast, but we only, have, we only have a little more than five minutes left. Let's go to Social Security. All right. Because I'm speaking to the gentleman about Social Security. He's explaining to me a personal story that he knows. By waiting one year, and not taking, me, Social Security, you get it, we reach a certain age, we're entitled to it, that's what I know, we'll start getting checks. We're wrong. You have options. You don't need to take it at that time. You were explaining to me a story by you waiting one year, and to be specific, uh, the, the client, the person suspended those payments for one, they, they signed on for their Social mm -hmm. Security, suspended it for a year, when the client suspended it for the year, the wife in that case was able to take half the income, and by suspending it for the year, for the rest of their life on Social Security, they were gonna make $800 more a month by waiting one year. 
Okay. Most people don't even know to wait or not to wait. They don't even know that they have options. <laughs> Same thing, except I can't give you can't give us three tips, just two tips. When it comes to social security savings, what do you advise Long Island and our viewers to know that they already probably don't know? Well, first of all, let me clarify. It, the, the person I was talking about was me. And uh, I'm, I'm 66, I'm very old, uh, but my child bride uh, is only 65. So if I start taking my social security now, I'm not going to get that growth to age 70. Mm -hmm. By waiting one more year to when I turn 67 in June, my wife's birthday is also in June, she'll be 66, and that's the magic age for our age group. She can receive money and it won't reduce, she can earn money and it won't reduce the amount of social security she gets. Okay, right. So I'm going to go down and apply in June to get my income and then immediately suspend it, which enables my wife to get half. Okay. Now, once I hit 70, I'll start taking the money, but by waiting from now till 70, which in my case will only be three years, I'm going to get $800 more a month for the rest of my life. Amazing. Well, and my point is most people don't even know that these options exist, and if you don't know, you can't, if that's $800 a month, is $9,600 a year, $10,000 a year, it makes a difference. This falls into uh, the, that category. There's, there's stuff that you, you know you don't know, and then there's the stuff that you don't know you don't know. <laughs> and so, so how do people get in, how do people even start working with somebody like you, or, or you know, are you a, a financial planner? Is it, is it specific, you know, is there some other designation to it that makes you a pro at these two ends of your um, No, I, I chose these two areas because of my own life circumstances. I, I really uh, was disappointed in how some of the colleges would take advantage of the parents, so I want to help other parents so they don't have to suffer what I went through. And fortunately, being in the financial services business, I knew ways around, and if we had more time, I'd explain them. Uh, but with retirement, it's, I mean, I have taught Social Security courses. Social Security laws were pretty much the same for 40 years. Now they've changed. And I have heard people in banks, uh, in law firms, I've heard people, insurance agents, I've heard people in stockbrokers, they're still telling people and advising them the old rules because mm -hmm. they haven't learned the new rules. Mm -hmm. So how do you find people? I don't know. The, uh, the, the, the instruction f booklet for filling out the FAFSA form for applications for college, over 1,100 pages. Who's going to read that? Right. And frankly, everything is software. Even when you go to have your taxes done by an accountant, it's all done in software programs. And if you don't ask the right questions, you're not going to know. So the answer is, try to find somebody who is an expert in those areas. I mean, in theory, a general practitioner could do heart surgery. I'd rather have the heart, uh, the heart surgeon that's done it 10 times a week, you know? Well, well, He's sharp get, with the skills. How do they get in touch with you? <laughs> ah. Well, you can go to the website. It's uh, hrd-consulting.com. You have to put the dash in there because, unfortunately, my initials are the same as Human Resources Department. Okay. So it's hrd-consulting, hrd-consulting, and uh, just send me an email, and I'll be happy to give you any information. I'll talk to you on the phone, find out if I can help. If I can't help, I'll tell you. But if I can, I'd love to. And of course, you'd always uh, contact our friends at Blue Chip or, of course, check out 516ads.com because we uh, proudly work with Roger. Roger, we have one minute, a minute and a half left. Uh, one thing about the, we, we've recently met, but one thing I think you quickly learned is the vibe of me and Jody, our friends at Blue Chip and Benny, is the wonderful mixture of business with community. Uh, we are told you're on the board of uh, Alzheimer's Foundation here in Long Island to do great work. I know you have a, a walk coming up in May. Uh, please tell our viewers about the, uh, a bicycle run actually, right, not a walk, yeah. a bicycle run coming up in May. Please tell our viewers what you got. All right, I'm the Secretary Sergeant Arms for the Alzheimer's Disease and Resource Center. Uh, we're headquartered in Bayshore. We've got uh, offices, detached offices out in Eastern Long Island. Uh, we have functions going all year long to try and raise money. I am going to ride a bike 108 miles, hopefully, uh, from the Babylon train station to Montauk Point to help raise money for Alzheimer's. Uh, I also mentioned the band earlier. We mm -hmm. started the Yacht Club band. Well, there's going to be an Alzheimer's regatta, and I'm on that committee, and it's going to be June 14th up at the Sagamore Yacht Club. Uh, also co-sponsored by the Oak Cliff y uh, Yacht Club, which is amazing because the current Olympic sailing coach, Dawn Riley, mm. is going to be there. Uh, she's, she's an amazing woman. She was on three America's Cup teams, and you might even remember that all-woman team a few right, years ago. Right. She was a skipper. Yeah. Amazing lady. And she's really active in helping us raise funds for Alzheimer's. And yes, we need more research. It's the only top 10 disease where the numbers, the raw numbers, and the percentages are increasing. Uh, all the other diseases, we're doing better because they put money in, they invest right. it. And, and research is what cures. So we raise money for research. We also raise money for care. We train professional caregivers, but more importantly, the family car caregivers. Right. They don't realize 
in advance how much stress this puts on them, it, yeah. their careers, their right. lives, everything. Yeah. Roger, uh, we want to thank you for joining us from childhood uh, to <laughs> seniors and then doing beautiful work in the community in between. Uh, you may not realize it, but it's everything we'd like to be about. So I thank yeah, you for thank that. You. I, I got to say, pleasure. working with two of the most beautiful people, it just makes this morning fun. <laughs> thank you very much. Happy Jody Monday. Jacobs, we have a minute to go. What do you want to leave our viewers with uh, for um, this week? It's never too late to reinvent yourself. So I think uh, it might be scary. Uh, change is the only constant in life. So uh, be ready, embrace it, find something new. And uh, I don't know, I think I might have used this quote early in the year, but man, this is worth a repeat. May your smile change the world, but don't let the world change your smile. From hello, Long Island. Goodbye, Goodbye Long, Long Island. Island. See you next week. Thank you. <laughs>